Uh, so we're here in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm Dr. Ramirez, and I usually I, I uh, introduce myself as Raul, but uh, I'm with another doctor here, so I want to be a little bit more official. So I'd like to introduce again uh, Dr. Sagan, Dr. Meredith Sagan of the Mind Align Institute. Welcome. Thank you, Raul. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's just such a pleasure to be here with you. And uh, the Mind Align Institute is all about practitioners, like minded practitioners, coming together to solve some of our world's gravest problems. We have so much going on these days in the worlds of physical health problems, mental health issues, spiritual health issues. So, the Mind Align Institute is that institute where we're bringing everyone together under one roof to come together, join forces, and use our skills to educate the public about mind-body fitness integration, which for me is the global solution for health and fitness. Oh yeah, it's so true. And it's it kind of like the problem that we have, or that we're facing globally, right? It's like people aren't um, in the, prop, I don't know if you want to call it proper mindset, if that's like too simplistic, but uh, we're not um, building up so much. Like we're, like especially like if you, if you look at the politics in the United States, mm -hmm. again, it's, it's not really yes. uplifting, right? So. That's right. Well, that's what one such as myself, who's who's steeped in East-West integrative mindset, we would call that a lack of rootedness. Mm -hmm. So essentially, where people have become so distracted in their mind, good, bad, right, wrong, and this dualistic thinking, it's very easy to spin out into a lack of rootedness of just connection with the here and now and the present moment which is what you have to be in order to decompress from your stress. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing so much today in politics, which is these massively stressed out people that explode like a volcano, mm -hmm. and it's just so shocking to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, however, for someone like me, I look at them and I think, wow, well, you know, that's what happens when you don't know how to self-regulate or manage your stress. So yeah. It's just the result. You blow yeah. up or yeah. shut down, one or the other, either good. Yeah. Exactly. And one... Speaking of that, one of the consequences of the way our society, especially in particular in the United States, has uh, developed or evolved is that we have one of the largest prison populations on the planet. Yes. And you've done a lot of work in prisons. Yes, and, I have. Uh, can you kind of tell us how, well, I want to let people, the, the audience mm -hmm. know that this was one of your work in prisons actually was one of the that was the foundation yes. that that the, that was the roots yes. of my starting the mind Align institute yes please was, uh, uh, tell us about my working it. Yeah. with the with prisoners and so that was back in I think 2006 or 2007 i was working in county mental health with kids um, treating kids with abuse abandonment neglect and kids in juvenile hall who were you know, similar background, and I think it was in 2006 or 2007, the prison system, CDCR, they were offering a great benefits for working there. So at the same time I was at County seeing kids, I went and I started working with felons three days a week, and having that juxtaposition, working with disadvantaged, traumatized kids, at the same time as I was working with incarcerated felons, some of them who were only maybe six months I was working with a 17 and a half year old in, in a county and an inmate in ADSEG in level four prison for life who was 18 and a half, very small gap um, between their ages, but a very different life circumstance. And what I came to notice was that one set, the, the ones in the mental health system, actually had an advantage uh, in a way because they were getting training. They were getting to see therapists, mindfulness experts, be on regulating medication, whatever they needed to keep them, their nervous system under control after they'd suffered trauma, uh, which leads to nervous system dysregulation. What I noticed with the prisoners is that they did not have that circumstance. They were, a lot of them were what are called cradle gangsters. They were born into their neighborhood, obviously. <laughs> That's what you do. And they did not have the modeling for self-regulation. Uh, by parents that were able to offer a solid, firm, emotional container um, so that they could learn how to self-regulate as they're having their feelings. So in prison, there were so many disadvantaged people. They had never learned any self-regulation. They never had any mental health attention, yet they were some of the most traumatized people in the world. And that's how they were coping with life. They were doing to others what had been done to them. I don't think I ever met a prisoner who had you know, sexually assaulted someone who hadn't been themselves when they were a kid 
or most of the people who had domestic violence or these kind of violent crimes had been abused with kids physically. Uh, you know, deviant uh, you know, abuse as a child leads to, well, it's just what you know how to do. That was your modeling. That's what you got taught. So what I started to do was, well, let's put it this way. A lot of the inmates, they didn't want to take medication. It was against their culture um, or belief system. And so that reactivity that came from the trauma, they would just keep getting crimes within the prison. Um, so crime after crime, because what led them to prison in the first place, which was the reactive nervous system acting out, hitting, being violent, whatever, uh, also was not getting addressed in prison. So they would hit someone else in prison, and then they'd end up in ad set. They'd gain points. You know, pretty much three strikes you're out. Now you're in life for what could have started as a petty crime. Not a petty crime, but a, a, a lower-level crime with less points. When they were in prison, they would literally work their way up in the point system so that they earned life. Earned life. So as a mental health expert who was also an expert in mind-body integration, um, in 2001 through UCLA, I was in India studying the use of yoga therapy for the treatment of anxiety disorders. I'm an expert in yoga and mind-body health. And I thought to myself, my goodness, I need to, like, this is not good. i got to do something here because these are babies in here. They're just, the, they're the same people as the kids on the other side of the fence. They just didn't have resources. And I was like, well, wait a minute, they're the same kids as me. You know, I've had those same problems, and but I had resources and money and time and a different situation. So I thought, oh my goodness, I need to bring these skills to the prisoners. So I did, and I got well known for being able to work with people to help them with their conditions uh, without medication, and I would be able to, you know, solve people's headaches that other people hadn't been able to treat or meds hadn't treated or quickly relieve states of anxiety, um, quickly solve just social problems. Uh, so I gained that reputation and cultivated the methodology while I was there. And it was so successful that I thought to myself, well, if I can do it with these guys, I can do it anywhere. Opened up a private practice. And anyway, now I'm coming full circle, very excited um, of bringing that here now and it really integrating that um, with you. Yeah to bring yeah. it to the, to the public. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's really fascinating. And, and the point that you made uh, about, you know, these these are people mm -hmm. who themselves have been traumatized and they're not necessarily, like, mm -hmm. bad guys, you know, because it's like how, how movies are made where it's like someone is just, like, evil usually and so you have no problem with them even dying at the end of the movie, right? It's like mm -hmm. good riddance to the bad guy or the, you know, the, the bad organization. But the thing is, like, we're in life we're dealing with real humans who who um yeah who a lot most of the times these areas that they that they come from or that they're born into are called like underserved areas where they don't even have good grocery stores or they don't have you know the, the the teachers in the schools just have given up on these students and um so there's a lot of disadvantages that they have it's such is very it's heartbreaking you know yeah. i was in watts yesterday mm -hmm. for i think it was the 37th and 42nd annual uh drumming and jazz festival mm -hmm. and my goodness what phenomenal musicians you know mm -hmm. and part of the drive to bring everybody in to this was to bring awareness to the community actually to the bus line to the metro line mm. because they have people there who have no access to the mm. basic needs of mm. life mm -hmm. because they cannot get access to the basics of the metro mm -hmm. so they feel like a very forgotten community mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and there are activists and drives and people working mm -hmm. however that is my goal since 2009 um, when I worked in the prisons you know those the inmates who I worked with, they said, please, you've got to write these techniques down. you got to get a book, something. Because they were so sad when I when I left and we didn't get to work together anymore. Mm. Because then their teacher left. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, people don't need me. They just need the skills. Mm -hmm. And the skills, luckily, are very easy. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, found, they're basic. It's mm -hmm. just about turning your attention here, holding your attention here as you're in the world, and noticing yourself as you're with others. Yeah. It takes time and technique, but they said, please write that down, mm -hmm. and so I did, mm -hmm. and over the past 10, well, maybe nine years since I've been there, we did, we wrote it down into a manual, and we're going into production, but my goal has always been to get back into those communities mm -hmm. where I can work with those people who I just are so near and dear to my heart. They're my roots, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. they're, uh, yeah, 
and uh, who have always wanted to help and who I've always been here for. So, mm. yes, they just need the foundational skills. Yeah. And then once you know how to control your reactive nervous system, you don't need meds. Mm -hmm. You need to just control yourself. But to do that, you need skill. And then through that, through that self-control, people can begin to work their way out of that situation. But yes, it's a, it's a forgotten lost community, apparently, which is just mm -hmm. so sad to see. Yeah, but yeah a community China. full of potential mm -hmm. and talent. And um, uh, one of the things that uh, off camera earlier, we were talking, I mentioned, we, uh, we mentioned uh, how I was in Singapore recently and um, how they, it's kind of a big city and uh, they use a lot of uh, public transportation, a lot of elevator usage. And um, I was telling Dr. Sagan that um, oftentimes I would be in a situation where it's me, you know, as, as a male, and a lot of times, like, say if uh, a woman actually came into the same area and needed to use the elevator, uh, personally, I, I felt as though I got a sense that they were more alert or maybe even scared that it was just them and a male by by ourselves um so you mentioned that um that is kind of like uh, an awareness that not so many people are tuned into but you found that <clears throat> a lot of the prisoners tend to have some kind oh of my heightened goodness, they're awareness. brilliant like that yeah. they are absolutely brilliant someone like me it took mm. me 30 years mm. through mind body integration training to cultivate what mm. they already have from growing up in high stress environments. You know, most of the guys that I worked with, they it was life or death. They had to have the so-called spidey sense to feel everything like eyes in the back of the head to survive. Mm. So when I was working at the prisons, the prisoners were actually some of the most amenable people to, the, to my methodology because they're so sensitive. They A lot of what I do is energy. Like it's a it's not really energy work it's really not it's using my attention to breathe calm down my nervous system and be pay attention that's it mm -hmm. but because they're so sensitive and attuned to that sensing and feeling they were able to catch on extremely fast and literally change their life in fact I wrote down stories about it that I recollected I have a whole volume of them that I've just never published about where they were what their problem was what the technique was and how they practiced and you know moved on mm -hmm. it was very interesting stories um, and it, it is literally, I always had said 80% of those men have a very good heart and they were raised by good loving mothers and families, maybe not the whole family, but usually a mother who loved them or a father or a relative. Um, and they went off track because they had no modeling. So anyway, here we are trying to help these poor people to move forward. Wonderful. Do you, um, can you please tell us your website? Yes. It's drsagan.com, um, mindalignedinstitute.com. And so, yes, so just to, to finish that loop, you know, basically yeah. about the mindfulness pra practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the Mind Align Institute, what we're doing is in every moment working on noticing the environment. Mm -hmm. So right now some sirens just went by, mm -hmm. and I could feel where my attention was distracted. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to pull my attention back, mm -hmm. recenter myself, mm -hmm. and get present. So you may have noticed in that moment where I seemed to, there was a moment of distraction in my speech. That, if you notice that moment, it was because my attention was going to where the emergency was. Mm -hmm. Because that was a re, an example of a reaction. Mm -hmm. So what we, what we strive to do in the mind aligned culture and community is do the best we can to practice every single day to stay non-reactive, fully present, aware, and alert, to be here within oneself, with each other, to create something better, a better world, a better place uh, for all people, all nations, all countries. No, it's wonderful. And yes, and that's what the Hub is about, Mind Align Hub. Great. All right. Well, thank you for uh, spending time with me again. Thank you.